the uh, authority of the bishop's office or the crozier. These were not; these would be restricted to um, ecclesiastical uh, powers and not secular ones. In the year 1111, Emperor Henry V initially agreed to similar measures with Paschal II, and the agreement was he would accept these conditions and Paschal, Pope Paschal II would crown him Holy Roman Emperor. And at the ceremony in which this crowning was to take place, the agreement was read out, and many of the princes and even bishops who had been crowned, or who had um, found their place during the practice of lay investiture, uh, let out an outcry. They were extremely uh, displeased with this arrangement. And Henry V, upon this outcry, uh, rejects it. He forces the, uh, he arrests the Pope and several cardinals and forces Pope Paschal to crown him emperor anyway and um, to recognize his policy of investiture. So, but the abuse of the Pope among the Catholics in the Holy Roman Empire was not well received and there was uh, pressure on him to change course. And so during the papacy of Pope Callistus II, 1119 to 1124, the matter was settled uh, once and for all with a general council. Leading up to the council, which will be the first Lateran council, the first ecumenical council called by a pope, the first ecumenical council held in the West, um, the first ecumenical council held in Rome. In, leading up to it will be an agreement called the Concordat of Worms, Worms being a town, in, in the Empire. And the agreement um, is modeled off of that which Pope Paschal II had hamper, hammered out years before. Secular princes would agree to abandon their claims to invest bishops with ecclesiastical symbols of authority, but they would maintain the right to do so with secular symbols of authority. The bishops had an independent stature apart from the crown. So in the following year, 1123, Pope uh, Callistus II calls the Ecumenical Council to confirm the um, to confirm this um, conquered out of worms uh, to bring an end to the schism that had developed going back to almost uninterrupted a few years a few years in there it was interrupted but almost interrupted schism going back to Pope Saint Gregory the Seventh and. Um, Popes that were really only recognized by the Holy Roman Emperor and some of the dukes and uh, princes un within that empire. They had their own uh, pope, so to speak. And um, finally, that schism is being uh, healed at this first Lateran Council. So the council was called uh, to take place at St. John Lateran, the cathedral of the city of Rome. And uh, it was opened on March 18th, 1123, and closed either on March 27th or April 6th of that year. The uh, minutes of the council, what happened day, uh, minute by minute, uh, who gave which speech, and how people responded, those uh, minutes have not been preserved or hand handed down through history. The first three Lateran councils all have that... Um, share that same um, fact, that the minutes are missing. But we do have the canons and the, thing, the decrees that they agreed upon. And in those canons, um, a number of disciplinary canons came out. Um, one extended the truce of God, so there would be certain days of the year, particularly in Lent and Easter and Advent and the Christmas season up to Epiphany, where beginning on uh, Wednesday evening, and going until Monday morning, all Catholic princes would agree, agree to halt um, warfare during those periods um, for holy days and Sundays, and this actually had a, a, an effect of limiting warfare, um, the church as a vehicle for peace in the Middle Ages. Crusaders were granted an indulgence from temporal penalties due to sin. It wasn't that... Uh, you could live however you chose and then go on crusade, but, uh, and then have all of the punishment due to the sins that one had committed just simply wiped away. All of those condi 
conditions for um, an indulgence were understood to be there to begin with. So one had to be sorry for his sins, one had to confess those sins, um, so on and so forth, and those other conditions which we um, connect with indulgences to this day. They were understood to be there at the time, although uh, the granting of indulgences does become a controversial issue later on in the Middle Ages. Some of the other canons protected uh, the families and goods of crusading soldiers as well as pilgrims. So, you know, if the uh, man of the house is away on um, crusade or some of the family members are on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, their goods are very vulnerable to being taken over by less moral people. And there were certain canons put in place to uh, attach penalties to anyone who might be tempted to to do such things. There were canons issued uh, that once again condemned the practice of uh, simony, the buying of ecclesiastical offices or, uh, or sacraments. There were canons that forbade the ordination of bishops that were not canonically elected, uh, forbidding clerics from living with their concubines or wives or of contracting marriage after ordination. A repeat of some of the things that are, are putting into canons things that Gregory VII and those Gregorian reforms had strove to implement, a returning to a, in a um, more consistent and more disciplined manner, the ancient practice of the Roman Church, of the Western Church. There was a canon introduced uh, forbidding the marriage of blood relatives, and Canon 13 states, whoever knowingly makes or intentionally spends counterfeit money shall be separated from the communion of the faithful as one accursed, an oppressor of the poor, and a disturber of the state. So you can see that these are not uh, what happens at, uh, leading up to the uh, First Lateran Council, is, or at the First Lateran Council, is not a matter of simply the ecclesiastical discipline, what the priest and the monks or the nuns do, it uh, has effects on the secular world. The, um, the, we can see that as a result of um, how society was formed at that time, that there weren't areas sealed off from the faith, uh, areas of life that the faith doesn't have anything to say or um, is unconcerned. All, anything that affects mankind affects our moral actions. Uh, anything that it affects our intellect and our will, it can be influenced by a lack of virtue. And so those things that violate virtue, the church has something to say about. The 1123 was the first Lateran Council, and then a second Lateran Council was uh, called not too many years later. In uh, 16 years later, to be exact, 1139, this is the shortest span between two councils in the uh, history of the church. And this council was again called to heal a schism. Um, to a rival pope, an anti pope, had, um, had arisen during this time. And uh, this can the Second Lateran Council was called to heal that schism. Um, within the church. The, it followed the death of Pope Honorius II in 1130. At the, on the evening of his death, uh, February 13th, 14th, we don't, know, we don't know exactly what time of the evening he died, a conclave was held, um, was called immediately by the papal chancellor, consisting of a commission of eight cardinals, so not all of the cardinals, but they had agreed uh, beforehand that a selection, a, a commission of them would be uh, brought together to elect the new pope. <coughs> all the cardinals had agreed beforehand that anyone disagreeing to the final outcome would be anathematized. And those eight cardinals uh, brought together uh, elected a Roman deacon who took the name Innocent II. And he would reign from 1130 to 1143. One of the powerful Roman families who we saw going.